My auntie, my dad's not from Sheffield, he's from Lake District and his family were Everton. My mum's family are Wednesday. My nan and danced with players when they brought FA Cup back in the 30s. My auntie, my mum's sister, my auntie, used to like go. My dad did take us because, you know, they weren't cheerless, but I think that early 90s League Cup success, that was the first time I consciously remember being, I'd been before that, but that was the first time I remember. And ever since then, I've just been steady away. So I kind of got a season ticket early 90s and you know that were kind of start at golden era Wednesday really just been bang into it ever since really me I love being there and another thing is when I go to away matches pure love off fans because I sit with fans I don't not into this like there's a few other all right maybe they're more famous than me so they get more like grief but a few other Wednesday fans who are known for various things you Michael Vaughan's of this world and they're up in box and that but I like to be with people sit with old toe rags I must have been 12 or 13 and I'd just got into the ground at Wembley, 1993 FA Cup semi-final, Wednesday versus United and we got there a bit late, we'd been stuck in traffic, there were a minute gone and as I, get, as I sat in my seat, Chris Waddle were placing the ball down, 30 yard left foot free kick, top corner, oh my god, I could live to be 300 years old and I'll never feel, never feel as good as that. I'd not gone with my mum and dad, I'd gone with like some people who lived up our street and they like let me have a few tins of lager on way back or like tins of bitter, like horrible, like pissy bitter. And I remember like I, had, I must have had like, I was only like 13 but I had like a couple of, couple of cans of John Smith's. Oh, transcendental or oh, wobbly don't we up M1, it was fantastic, yeah. Definitely the best player I've seen in the Wednesday shirt and also a top man. You know like they always say don't meet your heroes? Everything you'd want him to be. Total dude. He has a football team called Chris Waddle's All-Stars, who I've played for a couple of times. Scored an header. He, he put a float at a corner in. This is only last year, this. At Allen's ground. He floated at a corner in. Big lads come up front back. Nutted it. Top corner. Waddle running towards me like to celebrate. And I was just like, it is happening. Beautiful. Top dude. <laughs> Just we did a bit of Twitter flirting, you know. He's on he's on Twitter, Carlos, and we did a bit of tweet tweet flirting. And next thing we followed each other and started to talk. We did like a smaller acoustic tour, um, smaller than his usual venues. And he come to Nottingham to watch us, and he come in the dressing room and oh, I fucking love him. What a guy! And you know, this is a guy who's got best win percentage of any Wednesday manager ever, which is unbelievable. Nice guy and all, you know, like not your typical football dickhead. He's like quite cultured. You know, he went to Vietnam traveling with his wife in summer and yeah, love him, man. And we find out like bits of, he tells us stuff that like, because he knows we're cool and we won't say out. He tells us odd thing. And, and you know, just to be able to, like I said, to be able to peek behind the curtain at your favorite clubs, amazing. You know, and he, equally in return, I tell him certain things. So I said to him like, there were, there were a minute last season when things weren't going as well. And maybe he wanted to sort of get the more moany fans on board. So I said, what you need to say, Carlos, is uh, everything will be all right. All right, it's a very Sheffield expression. Next press conferences, Carlos is like, and as the people in Sheffield say, everything will be all right. Oh, proud, apart from my kids being born, one of my proudest moments in my life. I felt like I were actually influencing my own club, you know, beautiful. Play it a lot and you find fans of it everywhere. So I went to World Snooker final last year, right? I've got to be right quiet. There's like me here, Roy Keane's here, drummer from Iron Maiden. We all get in like little press box bit. We're all sat there. A referee at Snooker's a Sheffield lad, isn't he? Old Brendan, he comes up and he's like, one, one of the players is about to take a shot and he just takes his shot and Brendan's like, how you getting on on football manager? It's like a real like vocational kinship. I love it, mate, I take it everywhere. And as I said in the documentary, you know, Mrs. Falls Asleep, turns that way, bum on leg, laptop on belly, bosh, love it. It's a bit weird though, because I like meet Carlos and I'm like, I play a game a lot where I'm basically pretending to be you, which is a bit weird, isn't it? You know what I mean? Because it's not like he's playing like 
rock star manager or something, is he? He's, it's a bit of a weird thing, but I love footy manager. I've played it a long time and all. I've played it since it was championship manager years ago. You know, and I've been down to offices, met Miles who makes it and all that sort of thing. So you'll actually find if you play it regularly that, you know, like you have regeneration, so your new players who aren't real players at 16. There's a John McClure out there. So you might, your star striker could be John McClure, you never know. Which, I, you know, real honour for me that, to be on the champ manager. There's obviously, for the older football manager fans, you've got your Tommy Swindle Larsons, your Victor Leonenko's, your Tonton Zola Makoku. Um, but a lot of me, a lot of me, last one, there's a guy called Maximiliano Romero. He's 18, if he's still playing it. Get him from like Vela Sarsfield or somewhere in Argentina. <sighs> Fucking player, mate. Absolute baller. Um, Facundo, there's a guy called Facundo, a new one, he's a bit of a boy. Uh, I'll tell you who is the guy, he's that guy who's at Ajax who's class in real life, Casper Adolberg, get him signed, he's your man. Um, but it's, it's, it's a bit big investment in your time, isn't it, footy manager? It's very complex these days, isn't it? I, I used to like it when it was just like, you know, by Alan Shearer and win league, but it's, it's, it's tough now. You have to go into all tactics and that, and that's where I struggle really, because I don't, not necessarily like in, into like inverted diamonds and all that bollocks, so, you know, whatever. Met Big Sam at a gig. We played a gig with Primal Scream and Big Sam, Brian Robson and Gary Neville were there for some reason. And uh, Big Sam were drinking a pint of wine, red wine, which is, you know, it's got to be, it's a recipe for art then, isn't it, that Big Sam? But yeah, we're nice. But I probably brought up a few people who spoke to him while he was England manager for them three weeks. Um, wished him luck. Two days later, he got sacked. So what, maybe I feel like I cursed him in some way. But nice man, Big Sam. Didn't have him down as a ref fan, but he was kind of dancing along and we weird in gig because my missus come over and she's like, there's a song where she plays trumpet instead of synth. And halfway through the song, she's like, look up there. And I'm like, what? She's like, Big Sam. Put me off, forgot words. It's hard to concentrate when Big Sam's there, isn't it? You know. But yeah, great. Unlike, unusual, isn't it, with footballers? Like you, you, certain people you wouldn't think are fans. Like Peter Reid, massive ref fan. Loves it. Neville Southall. Weird. But each to their own. Yeah, well, like a public vote and we won it, which was a bit mad. So we ended up like playing at FA Cup final. Um, which is a bit weird, really. But I, hold that, I do actually hold a very uh, dubious honour of being one of only three people to play a concert and a football match at Wembley Stadium. Can you name the other two? So I gave you a clue, one's Scottish. Come on. Oh, Rod Stewart. There you go. Yeah, you and the other one is a slightly tubby ex-dancer from Take That. Is it Robbie Williams? Yeah, played, played a gig at Wembley Stadium. Played football there as well. You're in the stratosphere with Rod Stewart. I'm right up there, aren't I? Yeah, I'm right up there, mate. Yeah, I only really re recently realised that, but yeah, it's quite an honour to hold, isn't it? You no, know, Shine the Light's just a song about hoping you, you can come into a fortune winning lottery really, it's just a daft concept, but for whatever reason it just got picked up as so, I think it were on FIFA, and so when your song's on FIFA it kind of gathers this pace of football fans being into it and stuff, and for whatever reason they entered it into this FA Cup draw against like loads of other artists and we won it, you know we play I think it was that FA Cup final when City, when Wigan beat City, which were a bit weird, but yeah, great, nice, nice thing to do. Oh, playing football's miles better because that's what it's a football stadium. You know what I mean? So to play, we played like a friendly and a couple of like charity matches, and I had to mark Simon from Blue. Simon Webb is his name. Oh, shit off a shovel. He's quick, and he used to play, didn't he? Like semi-pro. So I had to mark him. Oh god, he had me knots. I'm in a mess by the end. But I enjoyed it. You know, thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Bought England home kit, and we got changed in England dressing room which slightly put me out of it because last time I was in England dressing room, I was absolutely like mangled on loads of pills after last, Oa last ever Oasis concert on their tour. So I returned six months later to play football and it was just like, oh God, I did that in that corner, didn't I? And I did that and just felt a bit weird, to be honest.